Welcome back, Accounting Boffins. Right, we're busy with VAT calculations. Once again, if we look at our mind map, we're just going to quickly go through all the important factors, the, the rate, the standard rate of VAT, which we know is 15%, right? Obviously, there's ethical considerations, there's internal control, there's exempted items, there's zero rated items, the input VAT is a VAT that we pay, which we claim back from SARS, and the output VAT is a VAT that we collect, because remember, we are the VAT vendors, and we act as agents on behalf of SARS. Okay, quick, quick one, because we've done lots of this. Now we go into an actual question. It says here, Billy's Canteen is a busy takeaway situated in an industrial area. Although the annual income from sales is less than a million, why are they telling you that? Because one million is compulsory to register. Below that, voluntary registration. Billy, the owner, has registered for the business for VAT. So although he is not doing a million rand turnover, because he felt it was better for him to be registered as a VAT vendor. Now, the first question. Dodgy dealers, one of Billy's suppliers, offered Billy goods valued at 5850 for 2500 He stated that Billy must pay cash and he will not issue an invoice. Okay? Who are we dealing with? Dodgy dealers. Right. What advice would you offer to Billy? Number one, it is unethical to engage in such transactions. Why? Clearly what is evident here, dodgy dealers does not want to show the transaction, meaning they want to limit the amount of taxation or they want to reduce the amount of, 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 of VAT that they need to pay to SARS. So clearly they want to engage us in an unethical and a fraudulent transaction. Dodgy clearly wants to evade taxes. Clearly, it is evident from this transaction there can be no other solution. Why would he be offering you goods valued at 5,850 for 2,500 and saying no documentation will be issued and the, the transaction has to be made in cash? If you get caught, it will result in fines and bad publicity. Remember, the goodwill of your enterprise will be affected. Once this becomes public knowledge, you are then seen as an unethical business. And obviously, whether you, you, think, you, you may think you, you're getting away with it, but at the end of the day, you're going to affect the reputation and it's bad publicity, which we don't need. We want to have that goodwill in the community where we are seen, not only seen, but we are an ethical business. And that is very, very important. Good business practice must uphold integrity. A very important word. Even in our daily lives, you have to be, you have to ensure that you have integrity in your dealings. Transparency. Obviously, if you have an investigation and SARS comes and check on you and they find that you're in, involved in, in unethical practices which, would, which constitutes tax evasion, clearly you can see the consequences for that business. And then obviously, honesty. I mean, this goes without saying. Honesty, oh, we all know, is the best policy. Okay, next question. Billy's Canteen is a busy takeaway. We've, de we've dealt with that. We said that although he doesn't have the million rand or his turnover is less than a million rand, he's still registered as a VAT vendor. Calculate the amount of VAT that Billy will either pay to or receive from SARS. Right. So you are given transactions now and you have to actually calculate the VAT amount on those transactions. Let's start off with the first one where we are told that cash and credit sales for the period, including VAT, amounts to 87,975. Okay, so most important, remember what we said, like we've always said, and we're going to say it again, RT. 
T F Q. Read the full question. Right. So this sales figure of 87,975 is your total price including VAT, right? It's both, both cash and credit sales. So step number one, let's do the calculation for it. And this is what we're going to do. Watch what we're going to do here. Take your 87,975, 87,975, remembering that that's your total amount and it is the VAT amount that you want to calculate. So therefore you say times 15 divided by 115. And this will give you a figure of 11,475. So what have we calculated here? The 11,475 that we have calculated is the VAT amount on my sales. Now what is important, if you look at my calculation, I took the figure of 87,975, multiplied it by, now remember this is my calculation, this is what you, the layout in terms of 15 over 115 times 87,975 over 1. Okay, so the question arises, why the 15? Because that's my VAT rate. Why the 115? Because it's inclusive of VAT. So this 115 has got two components to it. It's got the sales figure of 100 plus the VAT of 15, therefore giving me the 115. So when I'm working with VAT inclusive, remember, it's always my calculation will be 15 over 115. So here we go. There's my, there's my answer, 11,475. That VAT clearly is your output VAT. Why? You have collected VAT from your cash and your credit sales, and that's the amount that you need to pay over to SARS because it was, like we said, you're a VAT vendor, you're acting on behalf of SARS, you've charged the customers on their sales, you've worked out the VAT amount, you owe SARS an amount of 11,475. I repeat that. The amount that you owe to SARS is 11,475. Okay, next one. So that one is done and dusted. Total purchases of goods, right? Excluding that. Okay? So immediately you can see that the price that you are seeing there is the 100%. It does not have VAT included in it. So, very simple. Let's do the calculation. Here we go. It's your 52,000, right? Let's take our 52,000. And all that you do is you multiply it by 15% because you want your VAT amount. And your VAT amount is 7,800. Let's see here. There we go. There's my 7,800. Okay, so watch my calculation. You take your 52,000, right? And because it's exclusive, you multiply it by 15%, and clearly you can see that then gives you your 7,800. So what is important and significant here is the fact that because the amount was exclusive, you basically had to add the 15% to it to arrive at the VAT input amount. Now, input VAT. This is the VAT that we are going to pay, but we're going to claim it back from SARS. Okay. So here we go. That one is done and dusted. This one is done and dusted. What about wages? Is it going to impact on my VAT calculation? Come, you should be giving me the answer for this. Certainly not. Why? Because wages falls within the category of exempted items. So no VAT on wages, right? So clearly that is given to you as a red herring, it's there to make sure that you understand what are your zero rated, what are your VAT exempt items. Okay, the next one we have here is telephone, water, and electricity. Again, that's the total amount that we have paid. Firstly, we've paid the expense. How much have we paid? We've paid 10,120. What can we do? We can now claim back the VAT. 
Remember, it's an expense which, is, which was vatable and it's an expense on which we can claim back the vat. Therefore, we do our calculation. Take your 10,120. Okay, here we go. 10,120. Because it, it's inclusive of that, you say times the 15 divided by 115 will give you a figure of 1,320. Okay, now what I want you to understand here, accounting boffins out there, is that what are you looking for? It's important for you to know what are you calculating. In this particular instance, with this particular transaction, you want to know what was the amount of VAT that was paid for the water and electricity so that you can claim it back from SARS. That's important. So firstly, the calculation is, as you have seen here, 1,320. More important is, or, or, or equally important, is the fact that this would be input VAT, amount that we can claim back from SARS. Okay, next one. So there we go. There's my 1,320. So if we look at our calculations so far, you can clearly see that on my cash and credit sales, my VAT amount was 11,475, which we calculated, right? Okay, then let's just change the color here. We paid VAT on our purchases to the amount of 7,800. That will now be the input VAT. So the cash and credit sales was my output. This is input. Wages paid to staff, I know, is not applicable, so there will be no VAT on it. When, I, when it comes to telephone, water, and electricity, I have paid VAT, which I can claim back. It would part, be part of my input VAT. So therefore, on that one, the input VAT amounts to 1,320. Okay, now look at the next item. They're telling you here that the VAT amount on old warming ovens that were sold, right? They, they, they're giving you the VAT amount. And that is why I say, read the full question. There's no calculation necessary, but they're telling you that the amount of VAT that was collected on the old ovens that were sold amounted to 400, so clearly you can see, there we go, that would form part of my output VAT. Why? I've sold the ovens, I've collected the VAT, I need to pay it over to SARS. Okay, discounts allowed to debtors for early settlements was 143,750. Again, let's do a calculation there. Let's take the 143,750 times 15 divided by 115, we're going to get a figure of 187, rounded off. Uh, did I just check the calculation again? Let's do it again. 1437.5 times 15 divided by 115 will give me a figure of, there we go, 187.50. Now, important. You had given discounts to your debtors for early settlement of their accounts. Think about the original transaction. In the original transaction, you had sold goods to debtors. So clearly, there was output VAT. But because you're not collecting all that amount from your debtors, therefore, you will be allowed to claim back from SARS that component of the VAT which you're not going to be receiving as a result of allowing discounts to your debtors. What did we calculate that to be? We calculated that to be 187.50, and clearly you can see you can claim that back from SARS, right? Finally, we have VAT on goods taken for personal use. Even the owner, even the owner, although he may be the owner of the enterprise, the fact that he or she takes goods for personal use, they also have to pay the VAT. Clearly, you can see, think about it, as if you are selling goods, but obviously here, uh, the owner is taking it. So therefore, you will still have VAT on those items. In this case, the VAT amounts to 105 Rand. Okay, now, if we 
we have to put this into a table, right? Let's go through each item here individually so you can see what we're referring to. Here's my output that was on my cash and credit sales, right? This was on the ovens that I had sold, and this was on what the owner had taken. So clearly you can see all these items represent the amounts that I, that I owe to SARS, okay? Therefore, falling within the category of output. Okay, now, the 7,800 would be the input VAT that I had paid, okay, on the, on, on the purchase of goods and services. The 1320 was the input I had paid on the water and electricity, which I can claim back from SARS. Right, the third one is an interesting one. Yes, it deals with the discount that was given to our debtors, right? And clearly you can see that that amount is what you can claim back from SARS because you are not receiving the full amount or the original amount of the sale. Now, if you separate this, and I want you to do this just to, just to illustrate it and make it clearer to you. Can you see, in this figure here, this one here, you're going to find that you are telling SARS, I owe you what, 11475 for cash and credit sales, but some of those debtors are entitled to a discount on a portion of their sales. So therefore, you're telling SARS, no, yes, I do owe you 11475 but because some debtors were entitled to a discount, I'm not going to pay you the VAT amount on that because I'm not collecting the full amount from my debtors, and therefore, it is seen as an input item. So here we go. In terms of my calculation, it's 11475 plus the 400 plus the 105. I add all those components. I subtract minus 7,800, minus 1,320, minus 187.50, and clearly you can see the amount that I owe to SARS is 2,672 rand and 50 cents, right? Clearly you can see I've separated output and input for you, for you to enable, for you, for you to be, so that you can now calculate the amount that you have to pay over to SARS. Now, the question says, explain why Billy benefits from being registered for VAT. Quote, figures to support your answer. Very important. The moment a question says, quote, figures, you have to actually use figures from the given information to support your answer. And here you can clearly see it. Although we owe SARS an amount of 2,672 rand and 50 cents, if we were not registered for VAT, then he cannot charge VAT, although he will be paying VAT when he purchases goods and services. For example, we paid the 7,800 on the purchase. Remember, the goods that we had purchased, we paid an amount of 7,800. So clearly, if you were not registered for VAT, the full amount would have been just part of your payment. And also, 1,320 on the essential services. The fact that we've paid that amount, we can claim it back because we are VAT registered. We are VAT vendors. Okay, so quite a bit of calculations in this segment. I hope you understand them. What is critical for you to remember, the moment you see an inclusive amount, it will always be 15 over 115. The moment it's exclusive, you just have to add 15% to the amount that you are working with. Okay, guys, let's take a quick breather, let's refresh, and we'll see you just now. Mm -hmm.